I think the Democratic Party has been as much responsible for allowing the system of corruption to grow as the Republican Party. Look, the 1990s gave us Bill Clinton pushing the Democratic Party into this massive fundraising game as they bent over backwards to make Wall Street happy with what uh, the Democratic Party wanted. I think the Democrats are as much responsible for this as the Republicans. And this campaign, my campaign, would be a campaign that tried to say to Americans, look, we're not Democrats and Republicans first, we're citizens first. And as citizens, what we're entitled to is equal power in this democracy. And so use this election to demand at least that. Now, my biggest hope is that if this campaign gains traction, if I get the million dollars, if I begin to get the attention that guarantees I'm in the debates, if I get to raise this issue in the debates, and people begin to rally to it, then there'll be a Republican candidate who says he'll do the same thing. Because I think if the Republicans see a movement towards this reform, they're going to want to get part of it too. So you can imagine a Republican reform a referendum candidate and a Democratic referendum candidate, which would be completely, uh, 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 I, I, it would be an ideal result because then it would allow us to focus on the Democratic and Republican vice presidential nominees and give us confidence that when we got to uh, November, we'd be electing a reformer first. Now, I don't know the Republicans are going to have a, referend a referendum candidate, but I do know they have a candidate now that often talks about the corrupting influence of money in politics and does it very, very effectively and is number one in the field right now. And his name is Donald Trump. So uh, what do you make of Donald Trump outing the rest of the politicians saying, yeah, I give them money, and when they give them money, they do exactly what I tell them to do. Uh, do you view that to be a positive force in American politics? Absolutely. I think Donald Trump is the best gift to this movement since the Supreme Court decided Citizens United, because what it has done is it has made people perfectly aware of what we all in the back of our minds already believed. He's pulled back the curtain. And now in the Republican Party, you can't pretend that this money is not having an effect because Donald Trump has made it clear it does have an effect. And he knows because he's been the giver and he's been the giver to many of these various candidates up on stage and to candidates on the Democratic stage. Why was Hillary Clinton at the wedding? Well, he answered that question because he knew she needed his support. So this reality is accepted by Democrats and Republicans alike. Uh, but the difference between Donald Trump and me on this, I mean, there's a lot of differences, including about $10 billion, but the difference between Donald Trump and me on this issue is that Donald Trump has no solution other than electing billionaires. And in my view, we already had that fight. It was called the revolution. We said, to hell with the system where you got to rely on the rich, the people who are independent, to govern the nation. We need a democracy, a representative democracy. So I want the same thing he wants, namely politicians who are not dependent on their funders, but I want to get that not by depending on billionaires, but instead by having a system where politicians do not have to bend over backwards to please the tiny fraction of the 1% who fund their campaigns. Can you withstand an attack uh, from the Republican Party, let alone uh, the fury that is Donald Trump? Because now you say even if you were elected president, it, then you have the mandate. I mean, you were the referendum president. This isn't about Larry Lessig. Who cares about Larry Lessig? It's about the issue. Okay, I hear you on all that. But that's not going to stop them, and it's certainly not going to stop Trump from saying, oh, this egghead who's in an ivory tower doesn't know anything. He's a baby. He's a dum dum. He's a loser. He, you know, he's going to say, he's going to throw everything he's got at you. Uh, are you ready for that? You've never been in politics before, and how would you respond to that? You know, I've never been in politics before, but I do have three young children. I've been through that kind of tantrum many, many times, and it's taken time, but I think I'm pretty good at managing it. Look, he can say what he wants, and I hope he says lots of things that are angry and vicious towards me, because, you know, it would help focus the issue. Because while he could yell and scream and call me names, what he can't do is take back the words he's already said. And the words he's already said are the words that I've said. We've both said this system is corrupted by the dependency of these politicians on these private monies to fund their campaigns. We've both said that. And let him now explain what the solution should be different from the solution I've talked about. His solution is billionaires run our country. Well, you know, 
I don't have much faith in that solution, and I have a revolution to prove it. What does he have on his side? What exactly would he offer as the reason for going back on the first commitment of our republic? You know, when Madison described the Constitution that he helped draft, he said in Federalist 52, it would be a constitution with a branch, Congress, that would be, quote, dependent on the people alone. And then in Federalist 57, he said, by the people, by the way, what I mean is, quote, not the rich more than the poor. Not the rich more than the poor. They were, in the critical sense, egalitarians. They believed that citizens should have equal power. They didn't believe everybody should have the same amount of money. They didn't believe that people should have the same power to speak. They didn't believe in all that equality, but they believed in this equality. And this equality is the one equality we've lost because we've allowed people like uh, Donald Trump to convince us somehow that having money is to be entitled to have power in our political system. Well, I reject that. And I think America would re reject that too. All right, let me ask you a, a tough question uh, that I would struggle with. Um, you, you're in favor of the Citizen Equality Act, which you, uh, you can explain in a second. I'm in favor of getting an amendment uh, to get money out of politics. Let's say Donald Trump says, yeah, I, that's the first thing I'm going to do. It's my first priority. Now, but we know that he's a maniac on, on every other count. And Hillary Clinton says, she doesn't have to say, we know it. I will do everything exactly as it is today. I won't fix a thing, I won't change a thing, but I'll be reasonable and I'll be a Democrat and I'll do practical decision making and things will continue as they are. Who do you support? Wait, so you're saying that Donald Trump says he's going to solve this issue first, but he's going to do all these other things too? But he's going to be a maniac in every other way that he's Donald Trump. Yeah, well, I don't support solving this issue bundled with getting us into war in Iran or bundled with turning uh, you know, the hardest working Americans in America into enemies of America, namely immigrants, or insulting women or doing all the other things that Donald Trump is saying. I'm not saying you know, it would be worth anything to get this reform. So no, I wouldn't support Donald Trump in that context. I would say let's fight, let's wait and fight for a day where we don't have to sacrifice all of that in order to get this. But that's not, the, that's not what I'm offering. What I'm offering is a chance to get this and then get a president, whether it's Hillary or Bernie, I, I have a sense of where you are on that uh, choice, but whether it's Hillary or Bernie, who would be enormously beneficial to this nation for what they would be pushing, if only we could fix this corrupted, rigged system first. 